Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video I'm bringing back a tradition that I started last year where I break down how well each NBA team spent their money as it relates to their win total. As many of you know, team building in the NBA isn't as simple as just throwing around a ton of money and there are a lot of nuances to why each team pays what they do for certain players. Some are underpaid through the rookie wage scale or just a team-friendly contract, while others are way overpaid but might have ended up on their current team through a salary dump that netted them an asset in return for taking on the big contract. It's pretty easy to put these numbers together. I did it a little bit more complicated way. I put it in a spreadsheet and I took the numbers from basketball reference for the payroll numbers and then divided it by the number of wins in the spreadsheet, but that's really all you have to do. It's just the how much money each team paid in payroll divided by how many wins they got, and that's their cost per win. As far as individual players are concerned, I'll be doing a separate video soon on the most expensive players of the season as well, just as I've done in the past, so be on the lookout for that. But I say all of this to say that basically, just because an NBA team spent a lot of money on payroll this season doesn't mean that they experienced a ton of success or that they even expected to. One note before we get started, I'm aware that these salary and payroll numbers fluctuate throughout the season with trades and signings and whatnot, but to make it consistent across the board, I just use the payroll numbers from basketball reference. With all that said, let's go ahead and get into the video. So first up, I thought it would be nice to start on a positive note. The most cost efficient teams in each conference when it comes to how much money they spent on payroll compared to how many games they won. Beginning in the Eastern Conference, the Milwaukee Bucks with a league leading 60 wins are the 2018-19 wins cost efficiency leader across both conferences with just over $2 million per win, which believe it or not in this is an absolute bargain, followed closely in the East by the 76ers, the Pacers, the Raptors, and the Celtics. If you've been following the season, you'd know that these are also the teams with the five best records in the East this season, although their place in the standings don't directly correlate to their rankings here. It is worth noting that these five teams, along with the Cavs, paid the least per win in the East last year as well. Moving on now to the Western Conference side of things, the most cost-efficient team in that half of the league this season was the Denver Nuggets with right around $2.2 million per win, followed by the Jazz, Rockets, Clippers, and Trailblazers, with the Spurs in a very close six. In contrast to the Eastern Conference, these are not the top five records in the West, but they are all playoff teams, and the team with the best record in the West this year, the Warriors, weren't very far off from the top five either. Once again, when compared to last year, you see a very similar top five, with the Warriors replacing the Clippers and the other teams remaining the same. It isn't that surprising to see such similar results in back-to-back -back years as many of these teams have similar rosters and payrolls to last year, but I would expect to see significant changes next year with some big shifts in team payroll with some of those big summer of 2015 and 2016 contracts coming off the books and potentially some big roster moves as well. Combining the two lists together now, overall the most cost-efficient teams in the league this past season were the Bucks, as I said earlier, the Nuggets, Sixers, Jazz, and Pacers. In the past, I've split these lists based off whether or not each team made the playoffs as well, but that won't matter this time around because every team I've talked about so far qualified for the postseason. Moving on now to the negative side of this video, the teams that paid the most per win this season. Beginning in the Eastern Conference, once again, the East has the top, or in this case, worst performer with the New York Knicks paying over $7 million per win this year, by far the highest number between this year and last year's videos, followed by the Cavaliers, Bulls, Heat, and Wizards. It is worth pointing out that the three worst numbers here all would have taken the top spot in last year's video, and it's pretty easy to see why each of these teams place where they do. No matter what the team payroll is, when you're only winning around 20 games like the Bulls, Cavs, and Knicks did this past season, you're going to be paying a lot of money per win. Those three teams combined for less than the Bucks had on the entire season, which clearly explains why the Bucks' cost per win is less than half of each of these three teams. For the Wizards and Heat, on the other hand, they had much more respectable seasons in terms of wins, but their payrolls are so high that they ended up in this group anyway. 39 wins for Miami and 33 for Washington isn't all that bad considering their circumstances, but with the first and 11th highest payrolls in the league respectively, I'm sure each of these teams were expecting to win more games than that and get more out of their spending in terms of wins. On the Western Conference side, things begin with the team with the worst record in the conference, the Phoenix Suns at just under $6 million per win, followed by the Grizzlies, 
Pelicans, Timberwolves, and Thunder. This is an interesting list because you have the typical awful team that won such a low number of games that their cost per win was always going to be extremely high with the Suns, some mediocre teams with high payrolls like the Grizzlies, but also a playoff team that might end up making the Western Conference Finals in the Thunder. There are a few reasons why the Thunder made this list. First, they have the third highest payroll in the league, and the only reason they didn't have a worse placing on this list is because they won so many games, but also because the Western Conference was generally more efficient with their cost per win across the entire conference, as you'll see with the overall numbers in a bit. As for the Pelicans and Timberwolves, their story is pretty similar to that of the Grizzlies. They have pretty high payrolls and mediocre teams that just weren't playoff caliber in a tough Western Conference this season. And now on to the highest cost per win across the entire league. As I said, the Knicks started off followed by the Cavs, Suns, Bulls, and Heat. So four of the five highest cost per win numbers came from the Eastern Conference, while three of the five lowest cost per win numbers also came from the East. So like I said, from top to bottom, typically the West did better in terms of cost per win. The East has a lot of the teams within the top five, like I said, four out of the five of them, and just up and down just because generally the West won more games than the East because they're the superior conference from top to bottom. Their cost per win numbers were typically a little bit better across the board than the Eastern Conference. Moving on now, comparing these results to last year, there are two teams that have the dubious distinction of placing in the overall top five for paying the most per win in back-to-back -back seasons, the Knicks and the Suns, and both of them even saw their cost go up pretty significantly compared to last year, with the Knicks' essentially doubling. Looking at the whole list now, there are a few interesting tidbits I wanted to point out. Going back to what I was talking about with the Thunder earlier, they were in the bottom five in the West in cost efficiency, but it doesn't look as bad in the context of all the teams across the entire league, regardless of conference, where they're only 12th worst. Also, among teams that didn't make the playoffs, the Kings and Mavericks were essentially tied for the lowest cost per win, with the LA Lakers placing third, but overall those three teams don't look as great, placing 13th, 14th, and 17th, respectively. In summary, it's pretty clear where the ends of the spectrum are in terms of cost per win. There are teams that do extremely well through a combination of the utilization of the rookie wage scale, smart contracts, and low cost role players that allow them to win a lot of games with a relatively low cost, such as the Bucks and Sixers. And on the other side, it's either a mediocre team that has a payroll bogged down by inflated contracts, such as the Heat, or just a completely awful team that would have a high cost per win no matter what, because they won so low games, such as the Knicks. There are certainly some teams in between. Teams like the Warriors get away with such a large payroll because they're so successful and win so many games anyway, but there are obvious factors that allow them to spend so much money and be confident that we'll pay off with wins and pretty often championships as well. Now, I will say there were some teams that I expected before I ran the numbers. I expected them to be on here. Teams like the Hornets have a high payroll, didn't win that many games, and they're in a very similar situation to the Heat, but their payroll just wasn't as crazy as the Heat's was, so that certainly brought them down. And I also kind of expected a team like Brooklyn to maybe be in the top five most efficient teams in the East, but then I remembered that even though they're very good with their salaries and they have players on rookie contracts and that keeps their payroll down, they've also taken on a good amount of salary dumps this year and in years prior with guys like Demar Carroll and Kenneth Farid, and that inflated their salaries, even with guys that aren't necessarily crucial to their team. So let me know in the comment section down below what things you expected to be in this video that turned out not to be the case. Like I said, I had some expectations about some certain teams potentially being in this video and being in the top five in each conference. And maybe you had some of the same things or maybe you got all of them right and you knew exactly who was going to be where they were based off you know how much money they're paying their players and how many wins they had. Just let me know down in the comment section below. I don't respond to as many comments as I'd like to, but I do read them every single day. I take a look and see what you guys have to say about the video. Any kind of feedback, any expectations you had for the video that didn't actually occur, anything like that, be sure to let me know. And there you have it, the best and worst teams in the NBA for the 2018-19 season in terms of cost per win. Like I said in the beginning, be on the lookout for a video similar to this, taking a look at player salaries and some crazy numbers on players that were paid insane amounts of money relative to their on-court production for a variety of reasons. With all that said, once again, my name is Tucker. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then leaving a like rating is a great way to let me know. And if you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.